All right, good morning. Welcome to episode three. I got my tea, we're gonna get going. We're gonna work on the fuel injection system. We're gonna pull the fuel injectors out. We're gonna try to do some testing on the fuel pump, the outflow, as well as the pressure for that. So far, you saw in the last episode, if you didn't see that, you can go back. But in the last episode, we found that the coil was bad. I went and did some more checking, it is bad, so I'm gonna order a new one. All right, what we'll do is get start getting those parts back in. We'll start putting everything back together, see where we're at with the bike. But for today, what we're gonna do is check the fuel injectors. So we're gonna try to do some pressure testing on the fuel pump without having to take it out. Alrighty, let's get going. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tackle these nasty throttle bodies today. We're gonna take out the fuel injector. We're gonna clean these up, pull in the part washer. We're gonna do all sorts of stuff here. We're gonna try to check these uh, fuel injectors to see how they're working, see if they're clean. Probably not clean, they probably need to be some cleaning. We're gonna do some testing with that as well. All right, for your newer mechanics out there, I'm using the Allen here to get these uh, bolts out. That's what these are, the Allen screws. All right, so that allows me to pull this fuel injector out. This uh, piece here needs to be cleaned up. We'll clean that up and hang it. And here's the fuel injector itself. This part here will, fuel will come in here. Electronics will allow this to open up and spray fuel out here. We're gonna test that. That allows fuel to go in here and go through here and you have a air fuel mixture ratio in there. That's a lot of that, how that happens. Alrighty, place these gaskets. These are gonna go get replaced. Fuel injector gasket right here. Pull this off. You wonder where I get these? I just get these at Harbor Freight. These are cheap uh, picks here. Nothing special. I think that's ready to go into parts washer. How about this next one here. These are all old gaskets. I've got on I've got on order already. Now what this is? This electronic piece here. This tells the computer what position this throttle is in, what position this is in. And there's not another one on the other side because what you do is when you put these in, you make sure that this is the primary and this is the secondary and they are equally matched and you'll do that uh, later on. We'll show, I'll show you how to do that later on. There's also little marks here, just so you know, there's little marks line up so I know what position it's in. Then you can adjust it right or left from there. And we'll look at that on the adjustment of that as well. Probably wondering why and how I know how to do all this. Well, unfortunately, these throttle bodies on BMWs are bad. They wear out easily, they make a lot of noise, and these, these two make a lot of noise. So I've had this off before and I know how to take these apart. So what we'll do is we'll take these apart, see what they look like inside. Um, as far as cleaning them, I'm not gonna take apart and rebuild them. The rebuild kits are just really not worth it. So if you have an R1100 series motorcycle and your throttle bodies are bad, don't bother wasting rebuilding. Just buy them new or buy a newer version, less miles, and hope that that works. But I would encourage you probably just buy new. All righty. We're gonna take a little bit of carb cleaner. We're gonna spray it down in here, get it through all in here. And then we'll let it sit here in the parts washer, kind of soak a little bit. I'm not gonna make any adjustments on anything because right now there's no really need to change adjustments because it was running okay. And then we're gonna start from there, but I don't wanna make any adjustments on that. We wanna make that as a secondary decision. Um, we're just gonna clean everything up and see that, how that works first. All right, grab your toothbrush from home. You need to replace that sucker anyway. So go get your old toothbrush, get another bristle brush here, start spraying it in here. Clean it out here.
so just a little bit of information here. I'm using Purple Power in my parts washer. It is a uh, very powerful concentrated cleaner and I've used it over the years and my dad and I used it when we were rebuilding our motorcycle together. We found that we liked it a lot. The best part about it is it's water soluble, it doesn't smell, so I don't have to worry about the smell getting into my house. You know, as opposed to a garage that's out away from everybody. And the best part is I can take these, take it over the sink, wash them out, and they're all done. They'll be clean and rinsed off. Versus uh, worrying about threatening to put some chemicals down the, the sink if I uh, use something else other than that. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is clean up these fuel injectors, and then we're also gonna to try to clean up this throttle body position sensor. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on this, we're gonna keep it nice and clean. We use a bit of brake clean. I, ideally, you wanna use some uh, electric cleaner, but I don't have any of that right now, so we'll just use a little bit of this sparingly. We'll uh, spray a little bit on there, as well as on this rag. Clean it up. Ew. All right, nice and clean. We also want to check to make sure all those tabs are nice and clean. They look nice and shiny, so they are. So we'll call this nice and clean, stick it aside. Go from next. Next are these fuel injectors. Kind of wipe them off here. Clean off the dirt. They don't look too bad, actually, for what they are. Don't clean everything. All right, what I'm gonna do is wiping these down so I can get the oils all off of them, and then we're gonna put some little bit of paint on there to prevent that rusting to happen again. I think the reason why that happened was. When I was rebuilding this thing last time, I just wiped them off and forgot to put some clear coat on there or spray paint on them. So that's what happens, rust. A little bit of dupe color paint for the engine, nice silver color. All right, for the fuel system check, what we gotta do is make sure we got the correct volume out of the fuel pump, the correct pressure out of the fuel pump. We have to check the fuel injectors, and we have to check the pressure regulator. While the pressure regulator is on the bike, we'll have to check that when we get on the bike. It's probably gonna be okay, but we can bench test the tank as well as the fuel injector. So what I do is I create a little rig here of the supply fuel line comes this direction. You see arrows going this way, and then they return supply back to the tank. So this is how this is working. Fuel comes in here, the pressure is going to tell me what the pressure is, and then it'll go back to the supply. So I'll make sure it's good there. And then I also got blocked off. We're going to run that to the fuel injectors when we have a minute. So here we go. Remember, you got to do this in a well ventilated area. I got the windows open. I also have the garage door cracked a little bit. I've also got the ground sprayed down with a little bit of water so it prevents fumes from building up. I'm only using 12 volt. It could create a spark, but we're going to only do it for a few minutes. Not even that, a few seconds to see where we're at. It's producing well over the 43 PSI that the pump needs. We're good. All right, we got a little pressure built up in the system. We're gonna check this fuel injector, see if it's working, see how the spray works. All right, looks like it's working. 
All right, so what I did here is I provide fuel from the fuel line to the fuel injector, and then I use a 12 volt battery to activate the fuel injector to make sure you got a proper spray. We'll have to go back and look at the video to see how good the spray looks, but it is spraying at a pretty good rate. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the volume out of this hose into there, and we can measure that and how long that is and how much we collect. So we'll just time it for say 10 seconds or even 20 seconds and then we'll see what the volume is and then we'll be able to figure out our rate per hour from that. All right, we have a 24 ounce jar. We're gonna see how fast it takes to fill it up and then from there we'll go, uh, we'll know what our rate is. Should be about 110 liters per hour. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so we just checked the fuel injectors, those are working well. We checked the fuel pump for volume, that's working well. We checked the pressure, that's working well. So now we're going back to the triangle of spark, air, and fuel. While we have the air, we know we have the fuel, we're going back to spark. So the coil I determined was bad. Additionally, we're gonna look at the coil leads that go from the coil to the spark plug. They go in like so, and it's connects to the coil like so, all right? This goes inside the engine. I want to check the resistance on these leads. And I'm also going to check what these spark plugs are saying. I just looked at them. I'm going to tell you what they're telling me. So there's a little clue there as well. First thing first, we're going to check the ohms resistance on the coil leads here from one to one. Let's see what we get. Now I checked these earlier and this was not giving me any resistance at all. I'm not getting a reading off this, which tells me there may be a bad connection inside this lead. On this other coil I grabbed, coil lead, I got some resistance response. All right, it's showing about 6.21 ohms resistance. I don't know what it should be, I'll go look that up, but one's not showing anything, one's showing six ohms resistance. My guess is the ones that's not showing anything is bad, this one's showing some resistance. You know, wire does have resistance as it travels, so that's math there. All right, we'll check into that. Okay, now we're gonna look at spark plugs here. Now, if you look at the spark plug here, it looks really darky and sooty. This side's brown, nice and brown the way it should be. This side is a little bit blacker than the other side. Now, if you look at this one, this one looks not as sooty on this side or this side. Okay, this plug is fairly clean and came from the non-suspect side. This darker, more sooty plug came from the suspect side of the intake manifold gasket. The side that I thought was bad is probably an indication it was bad because soot means is we're not getting a full clean burn where this is, should be a cleaner burn. This looks fairly clean here and this is more sooty. I'll pop up a picture there to tell you what spark plugs can tell you. And this one's telling me a story that it wasn't getting a complete full burn. It shouldn't be this sooty. It should look more like that one right there. It should be cleaner looking. Again, in summary, this spark plug itself is telling me that there's some not a complete burn going on there. Alrighty, there you go, there's spark plugs. All right, you guys, we're gonna call it a day. So to summarize things up, we walked through the fuel pump, check, make sure they had the right output volume. I'll double check that and throw that in the edit notes when I go through and edit it, make sure the volume is correct. We had fuel pressure. We know they had really good fuel pressure, over 100 pounds of pressure. Fuel pressure regulator, we're gonna check that once we put everything back on the bike. We checked the fuel injectors. The second injector I didn't get on video because it, it, my camera died, so I'm sorry about that. We'll look at the video and see how good that spray is and kind of determine if that fuel injector needs to be cleaned and sent off or if it's probably okay. Next thing we did is we looked at the power leads from the coil to the spark plugs. One of them showed a resistance ohm. The other one, I couldn't get anything out of it. So it tells me there might be a break in that coil lead itself or uh, an intermediate break. So that's not good either. We looked at the plugs. The right side plug that was not the suspect side, it was cleaner, it showed a better burn. On the left hand side where we had the suspect manifold gasket, it showed more of a sooty burn and wasn't getting a complete burn. So it tells me that we had issues going on on that side. So that does match up for everything that we've seen. It's a hard starting. Now the suspect side, unfortunately, is also the same side where you have the throttle body angle sensor. The throttle body angle sensor is gonna tell the computer to add more fuel or take away fuel based on that. 
So if that side's not working well, that's throwing the other side off as well. So what we're gonna do is I got coils on the way, I got spark plug leads on the way, new spark plugs. We have the gaskets coming for the throttle bodies. We have the throttle, new throttle body intake manifolds. We already have those. So we're gonna put all that on the left-hand side and that's where the throttle body position sensor is. So hopefully all that combined together, all those little items will fix the hard starting issue. My guess is it will. These are a lot of little things that added up to a lot. So probably in all honesty, it's a lot of me ignoring little things and not putting maybe spark plugs in or checking those coil leads, but you really don't check coil leads as well, nor do you really check coils. So some of it's maintenance, some of it I would just say it's just an older bike. All right, we're gonna get that done. If you like what you see, hit the like button. If you really enjoy seeing what I'm doing, putting out here, please hit the subscribe button. That helps out with the viewership. It also tells YouTube that you like what I'm doing. Hit the notification, you'll know the next time I send videos out, as well as check out my Instagram. I'll send little sneak peeks out there ahead of time for the viewers out there that are watching. So I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys later.